It worked! <laughs> yeah, man. Six inches away from the. It just rail. goes to show do not grab the third rail with both hands and <laughs> on it from three inches away. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I gotta take a leak. Woo! <laughs> That'll never make it in the show. <laughs> It was tricky, but they've successfully jumped a current from the third rail up a stream of urine with lethal results. So after all the testing we did, Jamie, do you think it's possible to electrocute yourself by peeing on the third rail? Maybe given the right circumstances, it's raining, it's the ground's wet, his shoes are wet, or maybe he's not wearing shoes, could happen. In fact, there are no recorded cases of O'Malley or anyone else dying like this in the New York subway. Watching it break up in every stream that we've photographed, you know, just doesn't look like you could make a solid connection. I'd say that's a myth busted. Not that I'd be peeing on the third rail anytime soon. Hey! Oh! You're watching Mythbusters. Isn't that right? Coming up, can your choice of wallet make or break your credit card? Two million dead fish. A demagnetized credit card. More slime than the Ghostbusters. And Jamie and Adam have a slippery myth by the gills. Well, that's a sight for sore eyes. Oh, my God. Imagine the wallet that you can make out of this one. The myth here is that uh, in 1986, reports started to surface that there were problems with credit cards due to eel skin wallets. Apparently, uh, the rumor was that the eel skin wallets were coming from e electric eels and therefore electromagnetic currents or something were causing problems with the credit cards. Eel skin wallets wiping out credit cards? A fishy myth if ever there was one. There's only one place to start. John McCosker is Dr. Eel. He just loves them. And there are plenty among the two million specimens at San Francisco's Steinhardt Aquarium. I was called about eel skin wallets and the fact that somebody who owned this had on more than one occasion found a credit card didn't work. So she asked me, is it an electric eel? The eel skin myth slipped out of the deep. It was soon shocking readers coast to coast. Electric eels really pack a wallop. This is an electric eel right here. Yeah. It got about four to five hundred volts. I should put you on your keister. It turns out that there is an electrical discharge in you and me and every fish when they move a muscle mass. But they have concentrated this in muscle packs so that it builds and stores a very large discharge. And it's able to release it all at once. And when it does, it just stuns everything in the water around it, and then it just gobbles it up. The guys know flowing electricity creates a magnetic field. But surely leather from a dead eel can't hold a charge? Their mission is to put a lid on this myth once and for all. They'll start by making up a bunch of stunt credit cards using a magnetic rider. The strip on credit cards is made of magnetic particles, each about 20 millionths of an inch long. They record information in the same way as audio cassette tape. They all have the same information on them, and now they're ready to be abused in various ways. Let's see if we can uh, take the information off. Where are we going to start? What are we going to test on this one? Well, we've got to put cards in wallets, see what happens. We'll leave them there for a while, we'll measure the, the wallets, see what they do. It seems our myth is quite widespread. Eel skin has proved to be a natural leather that is harmless to the magnetic strips on credit cards. They'll be the judge of that. First, what happens after just a few seconds contact? Want to swipe them, see if anything happened? Yeah. There it is. All the data. No surprise there. Maybe it needs some wear and tear. 
There you go. Wallet didn't do anything to it. Let's leave those in there for 24 hours or something and uh, see what happens to them after that. Another theory, actually, is that during the tanning process, uh, a residue could get left on the wallet that uh, gives it a small charge that could demagnetize a card. Something like that might have uh, iron particles or something in it that they've impregnated the leather with. Yeah, and if such a thing is possible, we should be able to test for it. I can't help myself. I need some satisfaction. <laughs> it's like a bad television effect, but it's happening right in my microwave. Oh, that's the best. The microwave arced the metal in the disc. If the tanning process leaves metal in the wallet, it should do the same thing. Well, normally we'd see some kind of sparking going on, wouldn't we? Normally we would. You think it's hot? Might be warming up a little bit. No sparks, no metal. The guys need to find another explanation. It's warm. That's about it. They just can't seem to get a grip on this eel skin myth. Maybe that's because there's a twist in the tail. So eel skin wallets aren't actually made of eel skin at all, right? Well, not electric eels, not moray eels, or any other kind of eel. Actually, made from a disgusting fish called a hagfish, called the slime eel. Now this is a slime eel. You gotta be a little odd to like slime eels. Somewhere, somehow, a fisherman discovered this skin makes great leather. You know, I wouldn't look at this and think, wallet. No. This is Adam and Jamie's lucky day. The aquarium has live hagfish. They just look like snot in the bottom of the tank. Look at this! Wow! Look at this thing. Looks like the mummy. <laughs> Isn't that great? 